um, homeschool her or send her to, to school because I just think sometimes the schooling system, I mean, especially in Asia, yeah, it's extremely strict, you know, and we want our kids to become doctors or lawyers or accountants. Why? I mean, yeah, we should have those, but if someone doesn't want to do that, why would you do it? I just see a lot of people, we, we just, we, we, we're just living, right? And also we're existing, but we're not living. Yeah. But we want to start living. So, and you know, now there's opportunities where you can do what you want to do and get paid to do it. So why wouldn't you do that? But the reason so many parents need to change the mentalities oh, because they're huge. dissatisfied with their kids if they don't do doctor, lawyer, accountant, or failure. Do you know, I had a lady at my last conference and yeah. she her, her son plays a lot of games. And she really angry that you know, he spends all this time playing games and this and that. I said, it's a good thing. I said, what do you mean it's a good thing? Do you know there are kids playing games that are making half a million to a million dollars a month playing games using a software that you attach and it streams the games. You see, times have changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't let your kids play games so yeah, much, yeah. right? I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being the extreme of that. What I'm saying is you need to have informed knowledge to make an informed decision. Yeah. And I think too many people, they have... They don't have the right knowledge and they're giving unsolicited advice. And that's why you have to be careful. Look at the source of the information that's mm, coming to you. Correct. Look at the source of the information you're getting. That's really something important. I mean, okay, so for example, when he comes on here, we establish why we should trust him, right? We establish his history with businesses. We establish his property ownership. I don't just randomly say that for him to get to, to sound super cool. I say it so that all of you realize why we trust him, why we're listening to him. Yeah, continue. Mm. Um, and so I always think that if, 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 you, if you're putting yourself out there, yeah. and like for example, one of the best ways right now, if, if you want to get paid to do what you love to do, social media. Everyone uses social media. I mean, that's where we met. Yeah. You know, and I know a lot of friends right now who are on social media. They're starting their own. I know a guy who he makes pots. He's getting paid for the pots. I know somebody who um, is, uh, she's a pilot. And yeah. that's what she does as a full-time job, but on the side, she's traveling around the world. I know people who are on social media and they're fitness training, they're into fitness or nutrition. So you can go out there. In fact, Facebook is actually bringing something out where you can get followers now that pay to follow you. Oh, yes, really? Yes, it's called the Facebook Support Program, which will be coming out depending on when you watch this. Oh, I this. heard about it. It's yeah. out already. Yeah, it's out already. I mean, it's out already. If you go to my I have friends who have it. Yeah, if you go to my Facebook page, you will see a button that says oh. become follower. So I'm beta testing this for them right now. But, but they can still follow you even if they don't support you, right? They can. They can. They so you can have special things of correct. Their support. You can have free followers or you can have paid followers. So if you let's say you're into cooking, right? You can have followers that follow you for cooking, but you, they can pay you ten dollars a month to follow you to get the special recipes mm -hmm. for cooking. So there's so many different ways, but people need to they need to learn before they earn. If you write the word learn, L E A R N, mm -hmm. take off the L, it spells earn. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, back to the questions. Yeah. How do you balance your budget? An app, Excel, what do you use? I have a CFO. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, the uh, CFO, Chief yeah. Financial Officer. Yes. Okay. Right. He hired a person to balance his budget. That, that's the thing, right? You just hire people smarter than you. What if you don't have money to hire someone? How should no, a beginner well, balance their budget? You can partner with somebody. You can partner yeah. with somebody. You can find a CFO. I'm sure if you go online type in CFO, Right? Or you tap in someone good with money, say, you know what, I don't I can't, I can't afford to pay you. Let's partner together. That's what I did with my first business in real estate. Really? My, my my cousin Samantha, I couldn't afford to pay. I said, come and work for me in three months and you're gonna learn and earn. Right? Yeah. If you work for me, I'm gonna find you a house. Mm -hmm. So she came to work for me and I okay, I paid her a little bit. But yeah. she she took a pay cut, like a big pay cut. And I said to her, You do know that if you quit your job and work for me, I might not be able to pay you in six months. Yeah. And she took the plunge and now she's got three kids and now she owns one, two, four houses now. Wow. Right? So, and she doesn't work for me anymore. So yeah. she doesn't have to work for me anymore now. She doesn't have to. Right? She has her own so, houses now. So, again, you've got to be creative. It's not about the resources. It's how resourceful you are. Yeah. Right? You, you've got to think out of the box. Yeah. You see, if people want something bad enough, like when people say, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone's got time. We all have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. If something's important to you enough, you'll make time. Yeah. That's a really true mm. principle. From Instagram, Rajan Nadapa asks, is borrowing money good or bad? Depends. Are you borrowing money to buy a liability or are you borrowing money to buy an asset? Right? So 
a lot of people don't understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Yeah. Like if you like, for example, a lot of people say this. You know, if you if you buy a smartphone, it's going to cost you five to a thousand dollars for a phone. Mm -hmm. Right. You could easily put that into a website and drive some traffic there, pay some people to promote it. Then you make more than that back. So the the whole idea is. You want so give me an, give me a simple example of an asset and a simple example of a liability that a normal person would have. Right. So people would take a credit card. In the UK, it's really bad for credit cards. Yeah. They'll take a credit card and they'll go on holiday. They'll pay ten thousand pound for a holiday. Okay. It's gone. Right. That's, that, that's it, and you have to pay it back again. Right. Yes. An asset is if you buy, for example, a watch. Yeah. Right. But a certain type of watch. Yeah. For example, one asset watch could be a Rolex Daytona. Yeah. Because there's a five year waiting list for a Rolex Daytona, you could buy it for ten thousand and tomorrow sell it for fifteen, twenty thousand, depending on the demand. Oh, so it's a good purchase so because you can resell it. Correct. There's a difference between good debt and bad debt. Oh. Right? So for example, if I said to you buy my Lamborghini for a hundred thousand in Singapore, Lamborghini is a half a million, right? Yeah. So people go, hundred thousand is a lot of money. I said, compared to what? If you can buy it today for a hundred and you can sell, sell it, it for just two hundred, which is still below the market value here. Yeah. Then you make another two hundred thousand. Yeah. You see, so you have to understand what about the value. Student debt is that good debt or bad debt? I have a very strong opinion, but I want to hear his opinion. You know, there's a. I mean, you're from the U.S., right? Yeah. So they say that you know the average student in the U.S. will spend a hundred thousand dollars to get a thirty thousand dollar job. That isn't a question right. we have. A, right. a woman has. How can I save and invest when I have a hundred thousand in student loans? Right. So the first thing you need to do is rather than thinking about debt, you need to see what whatever you focus on, you attract into your life. Yeah. You keep focusing about debt, you're gonna get more debt. It's just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking about I don't have any money, you have to think about new ways to make more money. Yeah. And that's how you gotta do it. But the thing is when you've got a lot of debt, and personally for me, um, someone said so I some of my students that come to me for consulting are Harvard graduates. Yeah. They went to Harvard Business School. Yeah. And they come to me for advice. Yeah. And you right? didn't go to any school. I think I you didn't, didn't do, go I to didn't do that well in school. I mean, I've spoken in Oxford before, so you yeah. know, I go, I go and teach the students. And so I you're give like an honorary graduate from all higher well, educational institutions. I just think that I, I I believe that I don't think that formal education is not important. It is important. Yeah. But there are two types of education. You've got formal education that makes you a living. Mm -hmm. You have self education that makes you a fortune. Mm -hmm. But most people don't put time into self education. They'd yeah. rather go and watch Netflix or watch, you know, go to the cinema or go clubbing or go out at night instead of working on themselves and in their business. Yeah. You see. So um, my personal opinion is, should you get student loan debt? It depends. Again. Depends. It depends what you want. To, if you want to become a doctor, great, do it. Yeah. If if you like a lot of people that go to business school, my my question to them, someone asked me, should I go to Harvard Business School? I said, depends. Do you want to work for somebody or do you want to start your own business? Yeah. Right. Do you want to um, go into somebody's business to learn and then start your business? Like like what do you want to do? So the end objective of going there needs to be aligned with what yeah. you want to do. Yeah, I agree, and I think. Student debt, people jump into student debt mm. way too quickly, is my personal opinion, because people are so accustomed to it, they mm. think it's normal. Yeah. I was raised um, super religious, I was raised Mormon, and we were taught the only things to go into debt for are your house, maybe your car, because mm. I'm in the US, you can't yeah. go anywhere yeah. without a car, right. and your education. Right. But I think when people say you go into debt for your house, your car, your education, I think the way education works now is the debt that's gone into for a lot of people is way higher than the return they're expecting mm, to get. Right. So again, if you're going to Harvard Business and you're going into debt and you're planning to make $300,000 a year afterwards and live in a cheap basement so you can pay off your debt in two years, mm. that's one thing. If you're going to a performing arts school and you're going to be a theater major and you're not sure when your success will hit, it could be in 20 years. Mm. I think you should really be careful with mm. with student debt. You know, it's interesting. Um, there's a, and you can all look at this a real story. Yeah. There's a guy on YouTube who doesn't say anything. Yeah. He just sits there and he reads, and he's got half a million subscribers now. And people, you know how YouTube works. You get paid on pounding long people yeah. you watch your video. He's now funding himself through university through YouTube. Why are people watching him read? Watch me read, everyone. Look at all the books I <laughs> by read. By the way, his video is 6 hours and 44 seconds long. 6 hours and 44 seconds. What are, why are people watching? <laughs> it's insane, right? Well, do you know why people watch it? Is it like it's just novelty or is it, it helps well, them focus or? 
you know the world's changing. You know, it's like there's people who are playing with plasticine and get paid millions. There's there's kids that play with toys that you know have multi-million pound businesses. There are people that draw and auction. There's a guy that I kid you not has a Starbucks coffee cup, draws on a Starbucks coffee cup and auctions it for like three thousand dollars. His name's James Rias. Check him out. He's amazing. If you look at the Super Bowl, right? They charge five million US dollars and for a thirty-second ad. Yeah. Right. So how does TV make money? They make money by advertising. How does YouTube make money? Most of you who are watching this, prob- maybe you're watching this on YouTube, maybe, right? I don't use right. YouTube very mm-hmm. much, but I should start. Yeah, but amazing. I don't use YouTube. So all of you could, could upload videos and start making an income from people watching your videos because the way YouTube makes money is they put a, you put your videos up when people watch it, they place ads in front of that and then you mm-hmm. get paid money. So that's another way you could start earning income from doing what you love to do. Yeah, and a lot of people I think want to do that. That's one method that most people know. They Mm. know I could make money on YouTube, Mm. but they just don't know how to get views. Mm. And you need to provide value. value. Yeah, you can't just sit there and make some weird looking cooking dish and expect a million people to want to watch you. You need to create value and you need to create value over and over and over and over and over again. And then eventually it will succeed as long as every video you make or every book you write or every poem you write or whatever the heck you do, you need to get better each time. So if you're writing, if you're making a video and each video is the same as the last one and there's no improvement in any way, you need to look at what you're doing and get better. Because Agreed. consistency and improvement is what leads to success for a lot of people. Okay. How should teens and students manage their money? Young peoples. Okay, let me take a quick story. So okay. when I was uh, um, in, in high school, my parents used to give me three pounds a day um, for lunch. So yeah. what I used to do is I used to take a pound, I used to keep a pound, mm-hmm. and then I used to take a pound to school, and the other pound, actually not, what would I do? No, I'd keep two pounds. Keep two pounds. I'd keep two pounds aside, because I wanted to save up for a Neo Geo console. Oh. It's like a games console. <laughs> and but So I would save two pounds, I would take a pound to school, and with the pound I'd buy lunch. People go, how can you buy lunch for a pound? Yeah. Well, I would go to my best friend, his name was Ben Stobbs, and he used to have these, um, I could smell them. There was like these garlic sausage sandwiches. I could smell them from his bag. I was like, I was like you got garlic sausage? He's like, yeah. So he hates them. His mum used to make them all the time. So I used to pay him 50 pence and get the sandwiches. And then the other oh. 50 pence I would use to buy a, a can of soda and some crisps. That would be my lunch. And I did that every single day, right? Wow. For about a month. Yeah. So I saved up all this money. And then my mum found it and she said, why you got this money? And then she confiscated it. But anyway, she confiscated? Your money did. that you saved? Yes. But she punished you for saving money? No, but this is a lesson. Oh, okay. Actually. So this is why I learned this lesson. So what people should do with their money is this. They should split it up. So I have this um, formula. It's called the piggies system. So okay. think of a piggy bank. P-I-G-E-S. So the first thing you need to do, let's say you, let's keep it simple. Let's say you earn five pounds, right? Okay. So every five pound you earn, or five dollars, or ringgits, or dollars, wherever you want to And if you need a whiteboard, we can bring yeah, it over. That's okay. Okay. So, so one pound you need to put into play money. So I call this your play fund. So you need to have five funds. Your play fund means that you can spend money on anything you want without feeling guilty. Okay. You see, most relationships have a joint account and then, then people argue, so, oh, why did you spend this much money? Why did you so you need to have a play account. That's the first thing. So P is play account. Okay. I, you need to have an investment account. The only, a lot of people know how to earn money, but they don't know how to multiply money. Mm-hmm. The only way you can multiply money is to invest money. Like if you'd have invested in Apple 10 years ago, you could have bought one share at like $6. Today it's worth, well, it's worth a lot, right? Yeah. Um, the third thing you need to do is you need to give. Mm-hmm. And the reason why you need to give, like I, I support a lot of, you could be talking about what I do, education, yeah, I build yeah. schools in, in Kenya, I support the empowered youth programs that, that's put now 54,000 kids through, wow. and youngsters mm-hmm. through all these different um, uh, mindsets yeah. and, and, and motivational seminars. Um, so you need to give, and the reason why you need to give is because it, it switches your mindset to abundance. Yeah. So what you'll find is if you try and hold on to money, you won't get any. Yeah. If you give it, somehow, I don't know what the universe, I don't know how it works, but just more money comes back. This is weirdly true, but you do need to be careful where you're giving your money to. Correct. You're not just throwing money out and you expect yeah. to get money back. I think it should be somewhat strategic and with good intentions. Agree. Yeah. Agree. Uh, and so the fourth. I used pat- to struggle with that because I was like very, the cheapest person on earth. <laughs> and that worked for me for a long time because yeah. I was able to save money and travel mm. the world with like making $7 yeah. an hour. Yeah. But doing that is actually really 
a useful thing I just wanted to mention because it's hard for people sometimes to want to give when they feel like they don't have enough. All right. So G is giving. Yes. So E is education. Okay. So for the fourth pound, you've got to put that into yourself okay. because most people, they don't educate themselves. Mm -hmm. Like you should read books, you should attend conferences, seminars, you should pay for mentoring educate and coaching. Yourself. Like get that self-education. There's a saying that says, formal education makes you a living, self-education makes you a fortune. And the last one is saving. Right, yes. so you should. I think I think it's important to save money. I think a lot of people spend money, and that comes from when we're little kids. Like you, yeah. you do the chores, you get paid pocket money, you spend it all. Yes. So it's a conditioning process. So I guarantee you, if you follow these five principles of where how to manage and budget your money, you'll never be short of money again. Yeah, something uh, that surprised me as I was growing up is I would meet people, mm -hmm. and they would say, "Oh, I'm going on a vacation to this place," or "I just bought this car," or "I just bought this outfit," and I'm like, "Wow." you must have a lot of savings because I would never buy those things unless I had a lot of money saved. And then you find out like, no, that was their last money. They used it to buy an outfit or a car or, or eat a really nice meal. And I'm like, th this is why these people aren't able to save money and have money to invest. It's because they don't, they, they treat the money they make as money to spend. Correct. Instead of, whereas someone like with my mentality, I'm like, okay, only if I have a huge amount of money will mm. I buy these extras, yeah. right? Where yeah. I know it will never affect my bottom line. And you're, you're absolutely right. And it's the same yeah. with investment. A lot of people take all their money, invest in one thing, and if it goes south, that's why they go broke. And, no. and so, but if you have that, that, those five steps, even if you lose all of that in that investment, you still mm -hmm. got the others left. Exactly. So you should always invest your money in different places, not all of it in one place. So I have houses, but okay, this is actually a really good story. A lot of you asked me, Aline, how do you have three houses already and you're just a random person? Okay, this is how. Let's say you save a lot of money. You're 30, you had a good job, you have, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars, whatever people save by age 30. Mm. Um, in the upper income bracket, obviously. You can buy one house if you pay cash for three hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars or you could buy five houses if you put down payments on them. Yes. So that's what I do. It's called leveraging your money. So you're using one amount of money to get a lot more. So if I paid cash, it's true. I would not have to pay off my house. I wouldn't have to pay the tax, you know, the interest. But then I can only have one house in five years. Instead, I can buy three houses by by putting a 20% down payment on each house. Mm. And it's actually less money. So I have more money in the bank. Mm. I have three houses mm. now using the exact same amount of money. And she has capital appreciation and cash flow. So you're renting mm -hmm. the houses out. So let's say the mortgage or the loan on there is 500, but you rent for a thousand. Exactly. With three houses, that's 1,500 cash coming in. Yes. And in 10 years time, the loan's going down, the price is going up. Now you've got equity. That's yep. very smart. Exactly. Very and if smart. I ever make a lot of money, I can pay off the houses. But for now, there's no reason. Okay. Let's do... Okay. How much money do you have? Well, Approximately. <laughs> Let me Let's check. look at this. I need to check. <laughs> you Asking know, the hard questions. You know they say that if you know exactly how much money you earn, you don't earn enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So currently, I am 40% of this company called Wealth Dragons Group PLC, which is listed on the Vienna Stock Exchange. And as of today, and it may be different, it may be higher or lower, depending on when you're watching this. But as of today, my company market capitalization is 35.6 million. That is an official valuation. So, and you own 100% uh, of this company, no, or you 40%, have partners? I am 40%, 40%. Yes, I'm 40%. So 40% of that evaluation is yeah, yours, correct. if you sell. Correct. And my goal is to keep. Well, you know, I can't say this, but my goal is to <laughs> to push that up. You know, I will do whatever it takes. I yeah. work hard, and that's why I said business is extremely hard right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anyone who wants to become successful, do not expect. <laughs> there's a saying that says, "Don't expect a million dollar lifestyle on a nine to five mindset." Yeah. Right. Yes. So many people that okay. So many people want to work with the NASA Daily Company, mm. and they think immediately by working with us that they're going to be successful and they're mm. going to have all this awesome stuff. Mm. And then they say, "Oh, I don't want to work past 5 p.m." Yeah. And we're like, "You don't want to work past 5 p.m. means you're not going to do well. Mm. <laughs> like you're not going to do well in our company, and you're not going to do well for yourself. Like mm. the people who are succeeding are the people who are working way past 5 p.m. who don't even think about 5 p.m." as a time limit. Like mm. you can still succeed in, in a moderate amount working a nine to five job, but mm. don't expect to be doing something mm. insane by mm. working eight hours a day with a one hour and, lunch. And break. you know what's interesting as well? Um, yeah. 
uh, you're, you're, again, this 90% of people are probably with the same mindset. Yeah. I think one of the reasons for that is they, they don't have, the, they haven't found the passion or purpose yet. Yes. I mean, I can get by sometimes on four hours sleep. It's not something I condone. It's because you love but, doing but, but it. But I love doing what I do. Yeah. You know, I, I flew here. I had, over the last three days, maybe four hours sleep each day. I did a three-day conference in Singapore. I did a three-day conference wow. in, in Kuala Lumpur. I've, I'm here with you now. And after this, I have another two interviews. And so it's, it, I love what I do. I'm yeah. really passionate about it. I found my purpose. And my mom said to me years ago, like, you know, son, you don't have, when you find what you do, you never have to work a day in your life again. Yeah, exactly. Because you're not going to want to leave at 5 p.m. to do something else because you're already doing what you, you like it. doing. Yes. <laughs> you know, video making or cooking or whatever. So how does this work with your relationship? Like, how do you travel so much? Is your wife here? Is yes. she back home? She's with you, yes, so she comes with, with you. Yes. Oh, that's so yeah, nice. So we, we and obviously my, my daughter does as well. So yeah. Which I mean, my wife is very understanding. I mean, she I, I could not I could not achieve whatever she without her. Yeah. She's like my rock. She's like. That's nice. She keeps me humble she keeps yeah. me on the ground like sometimes i tend to like you know ego gets in oh yeah, yeah. This, and then she's like oh, cool. honey come on think about where you came oh, yeah i get it i get it <laughs> so she's she's the person that really i mean if, if it hasn't been for her she's so understanding and does she well, come with you like a hundred percent of the no, time no not hundred percent of the time yeah i would say probably around 60 70 percent of the time okay yeah and then the rest of the time you guys are in manchester um, Milton Keynes actually. Milton I, I, Keynes. I was brought up in Manchester. Okay, and I you live moved in Milton now. Keynes, which is about 30 minutes outside of London. Okay. So I don't like living in the city. It's too, it's too stressful. That's why I love this. View. If you can see this view, it's amazing. It's like you, you see these beautiful trees, all this greenery. It's, it's peaceful, very peaceful. This is at our house, by the way. <laughs> We're doing this at our house. Okay, next question. I was interested in your in your relationship with your partner mm. because it's hard. Like when one person is traveling all the time. You know, and, to find and, a you know, balance. funny thing is, I've been in a lot of relationships. Yeah. Ones that did not work out. Yeah. And it's so like, if you want to create a lot more success in your life, you have to have a partner that understands what you do. Yeah. Right. You both need to be on the same page. You both need to respect each other. Like, she'll have views. I have views. I respect what her decisions. Like, you know, I'm the boss at work. She's a boss at home. You know, she. Yeah. T I mean, you think I do what's hard? God, you know how what it takes to bring up a child. And to and to give birth to a child and to to That's manage a child, <laughs> it's so, like that so is that. Any of you watching this who are parents, you know you are all amazing. Like if you can become a parent and bring children up, you can do anything. You can build billion dollar companies. I'm telling you this. Yeah. So if you have kids, you have the potential to be a billionaire. You heard it here first. Okay. Do you? Okay. This is. Oh, so, oh I do a lot of uh, stuff about female empowerment. Okay. And 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 women's rights and like the kind of overt and subtle ways that women are have more obstacles in some ways yeah. you know every group has obstacles I'm not mm. saying any other group doesn't but that's kind of something that I like to focus on mm. and one of the questions from Instagram was do you think there is a relationship between economic success and people's aesthetic beauty and this was asked by a woman so I'm guessing it's more female centered but also I know also mm. men it can mm. affect especially yeah. historically now not as much my honest opinion, yes. Yeah. Um, it, it does have an effect. Yeah. Um, it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when you walk down the street and one restaurant has a queue and the other one doesn't, which yeah. one's got better food? Yeah. You know, it's just the way it is. So that's why if that's the game, you've got to play that game. Mm -hmm. You've got to play to that angle. So I'm not saying that you should, you know, put naked pictures of yourself on Instagram. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you <laughs> don't should. Don't do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> I'm saying you should be, you should please the you should understand your audience yeah. right? and you should be authentically you because there's two ways to look at this. Um, you want like, a lot of people say to me like, what do I have to post on social media to get lots of likes? That's the wrong question. Question should be, what do you want to post on social media to get the people that follow you, that like you and will stay, stick around? And we just talked about this community. Yeah. So I do think, unfortunately, that's the way the world is. It's, it's just us being humans, it's the, it's the media, with conditioning, I mean, unfortunately, we do judge a book by its cover. Yeah. We, 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 we have preconceived ideas of when people speak to in a certain language, of who they are. Um, even when we fly to different countries, oh, is it safe there? Is it, is it not safe there? So it's just conditioning. But my, my point is that even that is the case, you should understand that, but also be true to you as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'll use myself as an example, because I am myself. Um, I'm a woman, 
and I'm at least moderately nice looking and that's all you really need in order to use your looks to succeed. Yeah. And I struggled with this when I was younger because I was I was growing up. I'm growing up in Los Angeles, a super superficial place yeah. where I was like devastated that I wasn't blonde hair and blue eyed like my mom because now my life is ruined because I don't look like I'm supposed to look like a California Barbie doll. Mm. So I was really just disappointed growing up by that. I felt like I was cheated, you know, um, like how was I supposed to succeed when when the pretty people are the ones who succeed, obviously. The pretty ones are the ones who get the spots in the school plays or things. Uh, and I think that's something each of us are gonna struggle with. Uh, men too, men will have this to a degree in their own way. Like taller men historically are known to succeed more. Yeah. It, it's not happening as much now, the statistics mm. have changed, but you know, in the 70s and 80s, taller men got more business deals because of yeah. their presence. Mm. Um, and I think each of us has to think about that on our own. I personally feel that for me, my version of my own integrity is is not really playing up that part of myself. Is uh, is I want a world where women are not judged on their looks. I know it's probably never gonna happen 100%, but I know it can get better because it is getting better. Yeah. Because there are a lot of successful women who don't necessarily look like they're supposed to. Like mm. Oprah is mm. the perfect example. Mm. I mean, Michelle Obama, of course they're beautiful. Like Michelle is like super fit and Oprah has like great features, but they're not blonde hair, blue eyed, tall, skinny ladies, you know, mm. which is what I grew up thinking you have to be mm. um, to succeed as a woman. Because in when I was a kid, there's not women in business. No. They're just not. If you're a girl, people don't even talk to you about business. Like. We miss so much of the vernacular of business because it's never said to us. Like, yeah. you talk to your boys about it, not your girls. And that's totally changing now, which is amazing. Um, but I really just want to say to, like, the girls and the women, like, you can succeed without having to play up your looks. You can succeed whether you look nice or not. Mm. Um, I do my best to, yeah, yes, I wear makeup sometimes. I like makeup. But, like, I don't do my hair. I woke up. This is my, my bed hair. When I was mm. younger... I would never go in public if my hair was not straightened mm. perfectly. Mm. Never, never. I wouldn't go camping without straightened hair, okay? So that's just my little mm. brief aside on, on mm. women. Like, don't feel like you need to look a certain way to succeed. Mm. There's so many examples these days of, of different looking women. Yeah. And we are the ones who can change the narrative. So mm. you should succeed no matter how you look and show people that, that you don't need to look a certain way to but, get ahead. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. absolutely right. So, yeah. so to answer your question, the world is like that. Oh, it is. No, so I'm agreeing the, with you. The, the world is like you. that. Yeah, and I agree. I, and, and what I would highly recommend is just be the best version of you. Exactly. Right? Be the best version. Like, if you are overweight, go to the gym, get into shape, eat better, because it's good for you as well, because it's healthier as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if you... If, men if, or women. Yeah, men or women, assuming, right? Yeah. Like, if you're a guy and you and you, you smell, right? Clean smell. up. Just it's, yeah. it's basic hygiene, basic, just basic human being. Just... But just being the best version of yourself being is the really best enough. Of you. Yeah. It doesn't mean you need to get plastic surgery. That's no, no, not no. what you need no, to not, do not to be the that. best. No, I'm yeah. not saying yeah. that. <laughs> just people take things the wrong way sometimes. Correct. So I want to make sure it's clear. Yeah. Like yeah. when we say be the best version of yourself, we mean within normal amounts. Have good <laughs> hygiene. You know. Yes. Be healthy. Take care of your body. Um, take care of your mind. Like make sure it's sharp. Like for me. It is important to be presentable. Mm. Like I like to be presentable, but I also like to be natural. Yeah. So I could be super dolled up right now. I could have fake lashes. Mm -hmm. I could have, you know, um, super intense makeup. Yeah. I could have my hair styled and a really nice outfit. But I like to present myself to you guys yeah. as, you know, semi done up. I put some makeup, but I don't do my hair and I mm. wear a normal outfit. Mm. So I like to kind of create a space yeah. on the internet for. For women to succeed without looking like a like a newscaster weather woman, you know, I agree. <laughs> that I grew up seeing on TV all the time. Okay, so this is a big question. Mm -hmm. When people succeed, everyone feels like you owe them, like they should take from you. Yes. And I I love Oprah. She's my my favorite role model. And Oprah had um, some podcast or something where she was talking about how she had to learn how to say no. Yeah. Because people will ask for things that may be relatively small, like can I have $5,000 for yeah. a loan? Or yeah. can I have X or Y? Um, so so what's your policy on saying no? Uh, how do you know when to say no or yes? And That's so true, like sometimes, you know, it's interesting. Um, I notice this when I 
early in my early years when I made money, I yeah. would go out with friends and, and, and the perception would start changing. So we'd, we'd go out for dinner and then when the bill came, he said, oh yeah, go and pass the bill to John, he can afford it. I'm like, hold on a second. You know, yeah. things like that, little snidey comments like, oh yeah, yeah that, oh that's really expensive. It's okay, John can afford that. You know, so you're absolutely right. <laughs> it, it's almost like, if I show you the message, I'm getting, oh John, um, John I'm, I'm poor, can you buy me a house? Or, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, I get those second. too. Can you, you buy me an iPhone? I'm like, no. Do you, do you know, I had a TV show, a big TV show, one of the yeah. biggest in the UK. Wow. And they came to me and they said, John, we want you to be on this TV show and we want you to give one of your houses away for free. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You want me to give a house? Not because I don't want to, but yeah. do you know what message that sends to people? That you can just get things for free. That's one of the biggest problems right now is that people feel like they owe the living, right? They feel like, oh, you know, you, you, oh, you have it, I want some of that. Every, you gotta work for it. You want something, you gotta work for it. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest problems in, in, in the UK right now is like, and you know, the ge generations growing up, it's I don't wanna do any work, but I want everything. Yeah. That's like saying, I wanna have a baby without any of the paint. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you gotta, there's no such thing as a get rich quick. You gotta put in the work, you gotta put the effort, you put a thousand percent, you get a thousand percent. Bill Gates said, um, this quote, it's a bit harsh, but I think it's, it serves this purpose. Yeah. If you're born poor, it's not your fault. If you die poor, it is your fault. Oh. Wow, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's quite harsh, but. It's self responsibility, no one's gonna do it for you. The moment you take ownership in your life, everything changes. The yeah. moment you stop blaming people, the moment you start saying, oh, it's that fault, it's this person's fault, she made me, he made me feel like this. No, you're in control with how you feel. Yeah. You're responsible for what you want to do. It's cause and effect. You know, things happen in your life because of the action you take. If I yeah. want to lose weight and I don't go to the gym, I'm not going to lose weight. Yeah. If I don't, it's a, it's end of the day, it's a decision. You yes. can decide whether you want to eat chocolate bars or rubbish or you can eat healthy. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. So make the right choices. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. Do you have anything else you want to add that we did not touch on? Anything that's important to you? Anything that you think yeah. is very useful? Yeah. So. Or your own personal feelings of something? So one piece, one message that my mentor taught me, which served me really well in life, was you're gonna grow up and you're gonna do things, and there's gonna be a lot of people around you that say you can't do it. There's gonna be a lot. What I call these red lighters and green lighters. Red lighters, they try and stop you from doing things. Yeah. They say you don't have the potential. You don't have what it takes. Oh, you know, just stick, be realistic. Yeah. Those are type type of people. And the other one is green lighters, where they'll tell you, oh wow, if that sounds crazy, but you could do it. Yeah. So so what will happen is. The moment you decide to do something, everyone will support you if you're around green lighters, but the moment you start succeeding, the people that support you will try and pull you down, right? Mm -hmm. And so you start getting haters. The moment you start getting haters, that's a sign that you're doing well. Because if you are not big enough, like if people aren't saying bad things about you or criticizing you, you're not big enough. So Everyone, please comment how much you hate me on this video. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> um, so, so, my, and, and so what Vincent said to me, he said, you know, because I used to get really upset about other people's opinions where they don't yeah. even know who I am. I'll, I'll put a video up or a post, and like what, like I'll have a thousand good comments and one bad comment, and we you focus, focus on, on that. You know, yeah. so I just don't. There's lots of toxic people. Get those out of your life. Change your circle. Be around people who can empower you, and don't let other people's opinion of you become your reality. And mm -hmm. that one, this one last quote, which I'll finish yeah, with, yeah, yeah. is, and I said this to me. I'm so upset that these people said, brother. He said, you know, sheep, you know, tigers are not concerned of the opinion of sheep. And you're not a sheep, you're a dragon. Okay, so John also is on social media, by the way, and that's how I found him. And he has a really amazing Instagram where he makes videos that explain really confusing topics in a really simple way that I love. And what is your Instagram title? Uh, if you just go to John Lee Official and you'll see it with a verified. Here's the text, I will type it here afterwards.